Hey everybody, welcome to a dual commentary from VGT season number 26, Chosen and Butterfly, and we got a best of three series. This is actually Hydra VCK going up against DT Sky, and Sky is over here in the left position playing the yellow Zerg, and Hydra is down here in the bottom right position playing the red Protoss. So both these guys are in the top 10 or 12, I believe. I think Hydra is top three. I think Sky is somewhere in the top 15. Uh, last time I looked, I'm not ex for sure on that, but I would anticipate Hydra to take this series down probably 2 1 or so. Um, and especially with Sky being mid base Zerg, I don't think he has. Oh, he's oh. going for a pull. Oh, okay, yeah, so he, he knows uh, mid base Zerg, he has to try something crazy. We kind of already expected that he was going to go for the pull first when he sent the Overlord straight up. And the reason why I send the Overlord up is he wants to make sure that he's not going to be uber spot abused. And now Drone's going out to help explore, so that way when his lings pop out, he'll have you know less travel to know by. And knows where exactly where to go. Send the Overlord up, and Hydra usually goes for a Nexus. He likes to get that triple Nexus going, usually plus one, and then some gateways, and then another Nexus. I believe Hydra is the one that actually made that build known. The plus one, four gate, and then uh, another Nexus. But... He is definitely going to be going for that, and now we see a second drone scouting for Sky. What do you think? So, what's sorry, up? what do you think Hydra's chances are of winning this game? Hydra's chance? Yes. Uh, about ninety-five. Yeah, that sounds fair enough. Because Sky is really far away, and but he's going this lane build, and he will be scouted out with this next space. Yeah, but Hydra is probably the strongest micro player in VGT, or at least he used to be. Um, I don't know if he is anymore, well, but he used to be. Most old school players have excellent micro. You see, usually the macro is the harder thing to keep up with. And Tom is the, um, BCK is the epitome of that. So we'll see what he can do here. And now that he is going to know where he's at, and Sky did not want to see him down here. This is about the last position mm -hmm. he wanted Hydra to be in. He was already sending the slings up 12 o'clock, and then he realized, oh, I have to go the other way. It's the absolute farthest position that Hydra could have been in for his slings to get there. But he is going to go for the hatchery, so uh, this is probably Sky's best chance to win. Yeah, this is going to be his only chance to win, because if, if BCK pulls this off, he's going to have 10 times 1,000 million times the economy. Now he's gonna be. He has to make gateways. He's gonna be able to pump three zealots off right straight from the bat. That's gonna be enough to hold this. There's no way it's gonna go down. But that hatchery with the sunken push could could do some damage. Yeah, the the sunken push is his only prayer. He's not gonna win with lings. No, that's for sure. And he's not even gonna win with the hatchery. Actually, it's completely over. Yep, uh, Hydra's not even worried. He's not even trying to get a forge. He's just gonna use probes and zealots to fight this off. He knows that Sky's economy is gonna be trash. So he knows he just has to live for a little bit until he can eventually run him over. There we go. And Hydra just needs to keep those cellots together and keep them kind of semi-close to his probe so he can't be taunted. And that's what I do. I wouldn't even worry about the hatchery until I have more cellots. What, what do you think about that? Um, yeah, he doesn't need to worry about the hatchery yet, but he he took out so many of those zerglings. It's it's pretty much GG right now. Um, Sky is only going to have a one hatchery a zergling pump as opposed to VC Hydra having three gateways. Mm -hmm. One hatchery versus three gateways is kind of a joke. I think he needs to keep those cells together still for good form. DT's not doing anything really, really wrong in this scenario. It's just kind of the bad luck. His scouting was his last base. Uh, his sent his links out the opposite way to get that early on advantage. I mean, this build's tough to do to pull off, and he figured, I'm mid-base sir. My chances are he's probably Protoss. I'm probably not going to win this game. So I'm going to do something kind of crazy. Yeah, he wouldn't have won this game if he played standard, so <laughs> can't really fault him for going going for the rush. Uh, we we see people do it all the time. We saw, um, I think it was Woosh go for the the, the six-pool proxy hatch rush, and it actually worked against Day, I believe. Yeah, Woosh did a really good job pulling that off. Yeah. And I mean, and it's still, you know. I think Hydra going for some sort of a counter here. Oh, yeah, for sure. He saw that coming at kind of a semi-weird angle, so he knew they came in from the top. So that's where Hydra's going up. Oh, and Hydra's even getting a Nexus. He feels extremely safe. Um, see, because Hydra saw those Zerglings come in from the right side, you know, because of his probe they sent out to his choke. So now that's why he went straight up to the far right. And then he'll probably go top left and mid-right, and then he won't scout him out for probably the second base scouted. 
Can you imagine if Sky would have been top right and Hydra just went straight to him without scouting yeah. him? <laughs> See, that's why people always accuse people of hacks, because when people get lucky and guess something, people are like, oh, that's hacks, but, I mean, people are going to get lucky sometimes. In, yeah, they're going to get lucky sometimes, but it's also how they enter your base. Remember we were, yeah. what we were just talking about? It's, See, uh, Hydra, he's guessing like, wrong again. I said exactly, he knew he was going to go up there, and then now he's going to be like, where is he at? Is he mid-right? Or is he mid left? Top left? Oh, he's going top left, I think. Oh. Well, he wants to catch him off guard without even scouting him. Mm -hmm. But uh, Sky, knowing by how many zealots Hydra has, he has to know those zealots are somewhere out in the map. Yeah, exactly. He's getting the forge. That's kind of a safe play. Uh, maybe he's just sick of these circlings running around, you know, taunting him. How about DG Sky's base? We haven't checked this out for a bit. Uh, he's definitely gonna be under some pressure here. This is gonna be enough. This won't be enough to finish him off straight, straight. But the next attack will. What do you think? Think so? Um. Well, yeah. It's. Unless he, does, I mean, if he has a stack attack, or oh, okay. It's game over, regardless. Oh um, yeah, for sure. But he, I mean, he might live. I don't know. He's, no, he's, he's still using this, these larvae without the... Well, you have to. You have to that's do it. funny. This is what I'm talking about. The second wave is going to be the finishing move. Actually, losing these hatcheries and all the above is the finishing move. But, so it looks like we'll be going on to game number two. Yeah, we wanted to um, cast a series of Hydra. This is the most recent one. Hydra's kind of been inactive for a while. About the last year, he hasn't really played at all. But now he has been active this season, and he's doing really good. Yeah, he's been, he's been playing pretty good. And Sky was a was a hot player last season. I think he finished second or third. Yeah, so, I believe second. Yeah. Overall. And so gonna be a good series to watch. Hydra versus Sky. Looks like Hydra is currently up one zero. And, and how can you refuse to cast a game with Hydra BCK? Yeah, and there it is. Okay. So let's take it to game two.